very good morning to all of you namaste and difficult to forget my three years in west bengal therefore namaskar i hope it's correctly pronounced in bangla uh, dr sangeeta reddy ji past president fiki her discourse has indicated she would have made an excellent lawyer also while in covid she was facing a very challenging situation like all of you but as an advocate by virtual appearances she would have have had geometrical fiscal gain something which i missed because i was governor and she is to be a senior advocate i was envious of my tribe they were great gainers unimaginable gainers because by virtual mechanism a senior advocate could appear in a day in three high courts and a supreme court her discourse has indicated all the challenges we faced during covid and holding that took place and his spinal strength that was reflected by our health workers my salutations to the entire sector gautam khanna ji chair fiki health services committee has rendered a thought provoking address to all of us and i have no doubt the coming deliberations will be extremely useful and motivating Dr. Harsh Mahajan, co-chair of the Health Services Committee, I have to make a very special mention of him. One, I know of him through a very dear friend of mine, and my wife happened to be his latest consumer. I myself have had the occasion to be consumer of his organization and Lal's lab also, and trust me. i never remembered the consumer protection act brigadier dr arvin lal chair fiki swast bharat task force well to him i can only say i am from sunny school chitorgarh roll number 166 the connect is very different Mr Arun Chawla director general fiki i remember wherever i go these permanent pictures very differently others come and go they are always there to stay and we have to be on the right side <laughs> distinguished audience i am indeed privileged and honored for my maiden visit to fiki with which i have had a very long association thanks to fiki leadership i was there in paris as member international court of arbitration i was part of some committees also and every time i found on the platform people with knowledge dedication and commitment working for the nation so this fiki is healthcare conference fiki heal 2022 in the august company of leaders and contributors for national welfare is a cherished moment moment for me for all times to come the theme healthcare transformation driving india's economic growth it could not have been more apt or more timely our contemporaneous needs require real focus on this aspect this platform i'm sure will offer a deliberative mechanism where there will be exchange of ideas where innovation will be spelled out and transformation will take place i have no doubt it's going to be memorable for all the participants and again for the public at large healthcare undoubtedly is one of the pillars of nation building 
it impacts not only economy, but productivity, well-being and happiness of citizens. Imagine a very happy, satisfied family suffering a health jolt and everything goes wrong. So this is one factor more predominant than any other factor, financial or otherwise, that is important to happiness of the family. Healthcare mechanism is also a very robust indicator of health of the nation. I've been saying quite often, health and education are twins that need to be well looked after, nurtured and pondered for our present and future being. The obvious springs are innovation, entrepreneurship, and these twins are well-groomed, and they will take care of what has been handed over to us for thousands of years. Pahla sukh, nirogi kaya. Duja sukh, dharmi ho maya. If we don't have the first one, everything is irrelevant. If we have the first one, the second one follows. It is so heartening to note series of governance affirmative steps have generated an ecosystem that now affords ample opportunity to one and all to exploit one's talent and potential. The positive results are a ground reality. As governor of West Bengal, I had the privilege and honor to head a group of 10 governors to give a report on ease of governance. We had in our team people, all of them more meritorious and experienced than myself. And that was the basis of a very good report. I can appreciate that those who are engaged in helping the nation must not suffer systemic hiccups. They must not suffer roadblocks. They must be allowed to fast track their ideas meaningfully, seamlessly, without systemic handicap. I'm happy to tell you, I share it, the present government for the last few years has been massively engaged in curtailing and combating all these hiccups, and the results are for us all to see. More will happen. Affordable and quality health care are inalienable facets of any vibrant society. I recollect the day when I was an upcoming lawyer. My father was required to be treated for heart ailment. I was a lawyer of some repute at young age. I wanted to provide him the best of treatment. The country didn't have. I got in touch with a doctor here in Delhi, and they said one angiogram, if it is there in Mumbai, then Bombay, is acceptable in the UK. We could take our father to the UK. I still recollect Dr. John Wright. It was Princess Grace Hospital, and he, was, he had bypass surgery. Something that happens virtually everywhere in the country now through expert hands at affordable price. But Dr. John Wright, looked at me, is he on insurance? And I wondered to myself, what's that? And now we have in the country what the Honorable Prime Minister's vision has given us, Aishman Bharat. That's a big change. The mega health program, Aishman Bharat, trust me, is a great st stabilizing force. Otherwise, an ailment of some nature can ruin the economy of a family, which means children can't get good education. And therefore, the impact is being felt. I feel sometimes very sad that in some parts of our country, this very wholesome good scheme is yet to be adopted. I'm sure it's a matter of time. Sometimes realization takes long. He has bridged the gap between the rich and the poor in terms of accessibility of healthcare services in the country. And I can tell you, COVID has taught a lesson to us. 
COVID has made, made us health conscious. COVID has been a great leveler. COVID was non-discriminatory. It did not recognize religion, caste, creed, nation, region, nothing. The pandemic imperiled us all, but it taught a lesson also. Before COVID, we were in the red race. We were running after objectives which we cannot easily rationalize given our sound constitutional mechanism and civilizational ethos. We never had time for our own people. We never had time for near and dear ones. COVID made us realize that. A small positive fallout of COVID is that we could spend time with those with whom we needed to spend more time. And then we came to realize the greatest therapy is imparted by whom? By the time we give to our elders, the time we give to our near and dear ones. Making available material resources is the poorest substitute of such kind of emotive proximity till virtually end. That was realized. COVID has taught us many lessons and given us an image in the world that while the robust health infrastructure was collapsing in the most developed part be in the US or UK, we here succeeded. To vaccinate 1.36 billion people is not easy twice, and with a booster also. I wonder quite often, and I need to put it to you also, why a small category of people can't share glory of the nation, rise of the nation, achievements of the nation, accomplishments of the nation that are recognized globally. We had during COVID, not only challenge of pandemic COVID, we had challenge also from some islands, the vaccination can't work, system has collapsed, we don't have oxygen, people are dying, what are you doing? Not realizing in the process, they were inflicting a much more severe pain than COVID. And now they need to reflect. It is one country that not only had such astounding progress in COVID, it also helped several other countries. Smaller nations that look up to us because we as a nation believe in our ethos, Vasudev Kutambang, and that's what we have done. I will leave a thought with all of you. Look at history. Our country has never thought in geographical expansion. It has always thought of expansion in terms of knowledge. I was being indicated by Sangeeta ji, the world scenario about how much GDP goes into health and education. It's a valid point. Our ground reality allows us to march it in a calibrated manner, but it is taking place. It is taking place in a tangible manner. And the latest budgetary allocations indicate we are heading towards a good goal. We have a basket because of the challenges in the health sector, both of opportunities and innovation. If you look at the world scenario, there is hardly a global giant that does not have imprint and footfall of an Indian genius. Our health system is most affordable in the world and very qualitative now at every stage. I have been to some of the primary health centers. I was amazed the kind of facilities they offer. I recollect my days when I was elected to parliament in 89 and was a union minister. I came here and at that, that point of time, we were really facing a situation of infant mortality. Before coming here, I checked up. Sir, then it was 88 per, per thousand. Now we are one third of it. All thanks to the people sitting here. 
thanks to the people who are in connect in virtual mode. It is the great dedication, commitment of the health workers, health warriors, that we have been able to attend this. They deal with people who may not be that educated in several segments. And these figures, according to me, are massive testimony and contribution. And these will be on incremental trajectory, I have no doubt. Our country of late, you must have seen, and something is happening which we, which we never dreamt of. I can tell you for an instance. As a member of parliament 34 years ago, I had the privilege of having 50 guest connections in a year. That was a big power in my hand. Imagine the Honorable Prime Minister has given 180 million free guest connections, and they directly contribute to improvement of health of those families. We have become, recently, last month, fifth largest economy in the world taking over our colonial rulers. I have no doubt, by turn of the century, by turn of the decade, we will be the third largest. It has been rightly indicated by Gautamji that if we have to attain the object of five trillion economy in the time frame indicated, health sector has to play a crucial role. Health sector, according to me, is more intimately intertwined, not only with health, but also economic growth. Two are in interconnected and two cannot be separated. That, that's why I indicated, one is health, the second is economy. I have now seen our hospitals, been to the hospital of Sangeeta Ji in Kolkata because that hospital was especially reserved if I ever were to have a problem. Never had the occasion to go to a hospital. I wish all of you that you also never have the occasion to avail the services of those who are in black uniform, which I wore for more than four decades. In terms of employment and skill development, this sector is way ahead of others. People in this sector are very fast learners. And I'm so glad that in 2014, the Prime Minister had a vision and created for the first time in the country a skill development ministry. You directly or indirectly employ about 5 million people already. According to me, this is empirical. The figure is all the more. And I have seen in the villages a yearning in everyone who may not be a qualified health worker, but trying to imbibe the latest technique and mechanism. And that means we are on the way to making Bharat Vishwa Guru a position destined for us and a position which we held. And I am more particular about this for the reason that the demographic composition of the audience here is very enlivening to me. I see a lot of money, young boys and girls. They are professionals. They are the ones who can create what is in their mind today. I can reflect on you, but for a scholarship, I would not have had good education. Since I got full scholarship, I availed education. If the bank manager had not given me 6,000 rupee loan in 1979, I would not have had the library and would not have had the distinction of being designated a senior advocate within 11 years of my practice, perhaps unrivaled so far. All this on one account, an opportunity and facilitation being afforded by the state apparatus. Now, there are no constraints. The number of unicorns we have, the number of startups we have, the kind of mind-boggling investment there is, it is from those minds who do not have a succession lineage, who do not have a background of financial spinal strength, but they are those who have in their mind an idea and innovation 
and are lucky to be living in a country that is mother of democracy and the largest democracy on earth. And never ever please let a thought cross your mind that we are next to anyone. Step out of the country and you will know what is the strength of this country now. Look at these statements that emanate from our diplomats, our top people in world affairs. We have a mind of our own. We are neither guided nor dictated by anyone else. And this argument need not be made, need not be made because it is known to all of us across the board. A situation which we never imagined we are facing today. The kind of infrastructural changes we have seen here in terms of roads and connectivity could not have been dreamt at any point of time. I am the one who studied in a village, in a primary school. There was no electricity, no road, no tap water. There was no sochale, nothing. Sunset was darkness. And look at now, electrification has taken place not in terms of villages, but in terms of households. We have in our country a situation where earlier things were left to the government. No longer now, thanks to your efforts. Thanks to the people here, thanks to the people in front of me and in Virtual Connect. You have generated an ecosystem which is very, very accomplished public private partnership. There are several segments and sectors in which private enterprise has overtaken in, in quality and quantity the governmental efforts. And that is a very soothing scenario. The demands in health sector are now getting diversified and all stakeholders need to converse so that the ordinary man manages to have it as is the trend at the moment, in a most affordable, seamless manner. I can tell you, given our culture, heritage, and human genius in healthcare, we are prime destination of medical tourism. Being in Kolkata, I had the occasion to address institutions that were more than 100 year old in healthcare, like dentistry. Now what a soothing idea to any rich person also, anywhere in the world, to come to a place like Kolkata or any other place in this country, enjoy the culture and heritage, and also get the best treatment in this particular line at affordable, competitive, and real value for money. Pick it through its heel program and platform, which has been visualized very well, heel, I'm sure, will go a long way. I will make an appeal, particularly to the people here. We have a number of chambers. They are very prestigious institutions. In every chamber, you'll find talent of experience, exposure, wealth, and everything, knowledge. When it comes to a particular sector, I would appeal, let the chamber synergize. Let them have a common pool of think tank and let that think tank come out with a formulation that these are the challenges and the government can redress those challenges or help perform better to contain those challenges in this manner. I can assure you that if we have such a mechanism where all get on the same platform, scratch their brains, come out with a formulation, you will find in the vice president, your foot soldier, who will take up your command to the highest to ensure there are real fructifying results. I will appeal, let us work together, public and private, center and state, citizen and government for our collective dream of universal health care, affordable, accessible, advanced, and quality health care for all our people.
लेट्स वर्क टू मेक भारत अ चॉइस डेस्टिनेशन फॉर हेल्थ केयर एंड इट हैज एवरी थिंग वी नीड इंक्लूडिंग स्पिरिचुअल पार्ट ऑफ इट दैट विल गिव सोलेस टू द सोल एंड हेल्थ केयर टू द बॉडी थैंक यू सो मच आई एम ग्रेटफुल थैंक यू